Today I'm here with Jenny Hart. She has this amazing story about coming to the United States, hardly speaking any English and building up a business. And I know um, personally what it's like to try to build a business, even being from the United States. It is so hard. So I wanted her to come here today to let all of our viewers know how to do this and what it takes in order to have a successful business and just kind of tell her story because she's fascinating. So tell me kind of how everything started with your life. Thank you so much for having me today. Yeah, of course. I came here um, about 17 years ago. I was born and raised in Cambodia. My family is a Vietnamese refugee. And when I was in Cambodia, I'm going to take you back way, way back. So when I was in Cambodia, I, my family got um, introduced to the LDS church and that was my whole life. I got baptized. I wanted to go on a mission, get married in the temple. I want to do it all. And so when I was a part of the church, I was very involved and I met a lot of missionaries. And um, one of the senior couple that I have worked with, I was the housekeeper. Oh, wow. Mm -hmm. We um, connected, and they were the one that brought me to America. They're like, oh, wow. come to America, you know, like you will have a better future. And so I did. I came here without um, any family. Nope. I have, So just by yourself? Just by myself. And no. how old were you? I was um, 17. Wow. Yeah. You're brave. I, I know. My, grandpa my grandparents was like, Go follow your dream. Here's twenty dollars. We hope you make it. So I did. Wow. And yeah. Okay. So then, when you came over to the United States, who did you live with? Was it that couple? The, yes, the senior okay. couple that I live with. I call them mom and dad. So oh. they they live here in Provo. So oh wow, we're very close. Wow. Yeah. Um, okay, so then when you got here, what was were you out of high school by then? Yes, but because when I was in Cambodia, my family is so very very poor, so I never got a chance to go to school. I wasn't educated. Yeah. So when I come to America, they couldn't put me into um, high school. So I remember they sat me down and they were like, okay, well, what, where do we go from here? What is your heart desire? Like, we can't get you through education. Now you're just gonna have to pick um, a career path, like whatever you want to do, we're here to support you. And at the time, because I barely speak any English, I don't know what I really want or capable of doing. Yeah. I just remember going to the mall one day, I saw a nail salon, a lot of nail salon are Vietnamese yeah. um, people own. And so I walk in one day, I was like, hey, can I, can I get a job? And yeah. I got a job and that's where it all started for me. Okay, so you start working for them at 17. Yep. And then um, tell me where you go from there. Like, how is it? Because right now you've got this successful nail salon yourself. So how did that happen? I work in the nail salon for five, six years. And I remember one day I came home and I told my husband, I think I'm going to quit. I don't want to wake up every day doing the same thing. Um, it's just one set of nail out the other just no quality just you know all quantities yeah. it's all the same thing and I wasn't feeling very satisfied it wasn't something that I truly believe in I have always been this person believe in quality over quantities sure. so when I expressed that to my husband he was like why don't you you have the talent you can speak English why don't you just go out on your own open your own little something for yourself so I did I Open a studios, zero clientele. I didn't tell nobody in the salon that I was leaving. I didn't want any one of them to know. I wanted to start on my own. I want to challenge myself. Yeah. So I went out on my own. I uh, started Instagram. And I remembered for the first year I sat there every day not having a client. I came home. I cried. Oh, I questioned so myself. Hard. Did I make the right decision? Maybe I didn't, you know, maybe my dream was too big, too yeah. rich. And so, but because my husband was very supportive, he's like, you know what? It's fine. It's if, even if you're not making money, you at least doing something different for you, for yourself. Yeah. And so I hang on to my dreams and I just keep improving myself. And I realized that to be able to make a difference in our, um, 
days nowadays you have to stand out somehow yeah. so i pushed myself to take classes i i travel to many different states learning different um techniques dif- different products and that's how i was able to stand out among other no artists yes okay so that i feel like you just hit the nail on the head like if you want to stand out, you've got to do something different mm-hmm. than everyone else. And you decided to do the extra work to learn as much as you can and be passionate about it and yeah. spend the money, even if you don't have it sometimes. Yeah. Oh, it's so hard. It's I, I mean, hard. It's, like, it's like I said, like we've started businesses here too, but we're from America and that's hard. Yeah. I can't even imagine having the language barrier. and That part was really hard to even reach out to some of the educator and be like, hey, where can I sign up? And then they send me all these forms and I'm like, well, I am, I because of the language barrier, it kind of set me back because I'm, at that point, I'm like, well, I don't know if I am capable to do this. What yeah. if I don't understand what they're saying? What if they don't understand what mm-hmm. I am questioning? But I, I try. I push yeah. myself out there and I realize... You tried. You only have one life to live. You know, yeah. if you want to, for it to happen, you're just going to have to work really hard to make it happen for yourself. Yes, and see, so you just said something else too. You have to work really hard. We were just in my kitchen talking about this, how she interviews people all the time that would like to come, you know, be an apprentice or work for her. And what do you hear a lot? <laughs> a lot of people will come and tell me like, oh, well, I don't want, I can't work that much. I can only work two hours a day. I want to have what you have. I want to be where you at, but I don't want to put in the effort. And it's, it's hard for me because I came from a different country. I came from nothing. And I believe in hustle. I believe in hard work. I'm, I mean, if anyone that know me, they know my whole life. Like all I do is work. I am not shy from that. If I have to work 20 hours a day, I will work 20 hours a day. And for me to sit across from people who want so badly to have this life that they want to have, a career that they want to have, but they're like, well, but I don't want to do that much work though. (laughs) You know? Then you're not going to have it. I know, exactly. But then they were sitting there and be like, well, but... But help me. Like, how can I have what you have? You're like, I just told without you. Without working less <laughs> than what you work. Without feeling any sort of yeah. pain or discomfort. Yeah. This is going to date me so much by saying this generation, but <laughs> I'm going to say it. I swear I've noticed this. We have businesses too. And it feels like this age group, so many of them, well, I don't want to have to work on the weekend and I don't want, and I'm not feeling well again. Yeah. And I'm like, all right, well, you're not going to be successful. Like, I, I mean, we're, we hustle. We have yes. to work so hard. Yeah, I get so frustrated because I'm like, I wish that back when I started, somebody would just grab my hand and be like, let me help you. Let yeah. me help you get on this path. No, I have to figure it out all yeah, on my own. Oh, and even today, having a very successful business that I have today, I still have to constantly push myself, constantly work hard to to continue to move forward and to see that a lot of the this generation you know like they complain so much but they don't want to put in the Mm -hmm. effort and I I I talked to my husband all the time I was like how do we raise our kids differently how do we give them the the work ethic that we have yeah you know make them earn everything yes make them earn everything and you know actually this we're gonna say this generation again for like the 15th time but this generation does have an advantage in the sense that if you do work hard if you do put in extra hours if you do work weekends if you do those things you're gonna stand out so much more because you know back like my grandparents gener- everyone did that everyone did that before it was like you want to make it you can't be lazy like yeah get up and work yeah. um and this just says so much about who you are as a person. And it says a lot about your husband, who's right over there, who I wanted to be on because he's hilarious, but he went into it. But he's like shaking his head over there. Um, but how did you guys meet? Because it's like you went from not knowing anyone to then having the support of your husband, which it sounds like that helped you a lot. Um, so t- how did you guys meet? We met through a mutual friend. Oh, cool. Which, who I'm not friend anymore. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> we met through a mutual friend. Um she knew the both of us and then oh, so she, I guess one day she owned a little um restaurant in West Valley oh, cool. I was there and so she called Jack and she was like hey you know you should come hurry down because Jenny is here you guys should meet <laughs> and then we met and he's like well hey I'm Jack Hart you know we should go on a date and I was like ah 
not interested at all. <laughs> Playing hard to get. I get it. I know. And so he's like, give me your phone number. It's like, no, I'm good. So we, I move on with my day. Well, he got my phone number from our mutual friend. And because I told him, I said, yeah, I work. I do nails in Riverton. I didn't tell him you know where mm. so he decided to stalk me he would drive <laughs> smart to perseverance rush, like to different nail salon in riverton and he would go in there and be like i am looking for jenny little did he know a lot of asian people named jenny it's, fa- <laughs> it's just an easy name to pronounce so they're like oh we got you. They bring out like a 50 years old Jenny and Jack's like, uh-uh. that's not, not the same Jenny. So what you're saying is perseverance works in business and marriage. Yes. <laughs> it worked. <laughs> He's just over there. Just put his head down. <laughs> so awesome. Well, he want me to mention him every time when I get on a podcast or, well, oh. this is his chance. Hey, I'm the one that brought him up. I think he's hilarious. I, I want him to be on, but um, okay, so so where you are now, what what do you have in the future? Like, what are you wanting to do? Because, right, sorry, let me back up a little bit. What people may not know, and we're going to um, tell them where to find you on Instagram, um, is that she does a lot of celebrity nails. This is not like your average nail salon. You're doing oh. big stuff. And you yes. came here not even knowing English. And that was how long ago? That was 17 years ago. Oh, I still, so sometimes I still go back to pictures back then and I look at myself where I am today. And I keep telling my grandparents, it's like, can you believe that? Can you yeah. believe that I went to a different country with no education, didn't know the language? And here I am. Yeah. I get to work and meet with a lot of amazing people. Yeah. And lucky for me, I get to do um, a lot of influencers yeah. and I mean, you can call them celebrities, you know, <laughs> like the half of the cast member on The Real Housewives so of yeah. my clients. I love them. Um, so where I am today, I love what I do. I, um, but I feel like I got to where I want to be. Now I want to move forward. Now Mm. I want to, my goal next is to help giving back to my community. Mm. I feel like a lot of Asian people come to America, didn't speak the language. They kind of settle because this is all that they know. Yeah. Let's go work every single day. And I want to be able to help the Vietnamese community, whether if you are younger, older, if you are a man, woman that struggling to really want to put yourself out there, but for some reason is holding you back. I want to be able to have a voice and, and help them get past that. I want them to realize that language barrier is not, you know, it's not as scary as you think. Like if you really try really hard to be authentically people will understand you even if you struggle telling your story people can feel it people can understand you by your language you know by your body language by the way you tell your story sure sure wow okay so then what do you think about the united states like you're you're living the american dream there's so many people that want to come here and you know have this better life and you are living the american dream i love it here i am very grateful very, very grateful that I have the opportunity to, to move here to call this is home for me. Um, I came coming from where I came from. Uh, life is so much harder over there. And Jack and I talk a lot about how it is here. We are so thankful that our kids, yeah. you know, live here. We have freedom. We have a voice. We get to stand up for what we tru- truly believe. We're... I came from is a communist country, so you don't really have a voice. You can't really fight for your own beliefs, for your own life, really. Mm-hmm. Like you, your whole life is controlled by the government. And here, we get to do that. We get to stand up for whatever we want to believe. We get to write our own story. We get to have our own community. And I, and for that, I am so grateful. Well, you are such an example to so many people. It's just, you're inspiring to me. And the fact that you could come from nothing and be so brave and, you know, make something so special of yourself, which you already were special, but something even bigger, which is awesome. Um, That's just going to inspire so many people. So thank you so much for sharing your story. Okay. So tell me what the name of your salon is and where to find you on Instagram. I am just in a little studios. um, It's called Live Salon in Midvale. And... 
when you go in there, you can find my room is Glam by Jenny. But you can find me on Instagram is the real Glam by Jenny. Okay. Okay. Thanks. And she shows a bunch of the really cool nail art and stuff that you do on there too. Yes, I okay. do. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much for having of me. Of course.